the sheriff's officer said her name is Laura and that he would try to keep an eye on her. But unless she broke the law or got hurt, I think that there was little that he was going to be able to do. My friends, my intent for today's episode was actually to uh, celebrate the great success of this past Sunday's Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. It was fabulous. But if it's okay, I feel the need to share with you an experience that I had out in the country on my motorcycle about two hours ago. I just think that this may be something important to share. It's a holiday weekend coming up here in the U.S. Memorial Day is Monday. I'm excited to take some time away from work and, of course, ride my motorcycle. I got to jump on the weekend by taking a quick ride after work today out to the northwest. There's a place about 25 miles outside of Fort Collins, Colorado. I've spoken about it before. It's called The Forks, and it's uh, toward the Wyoming border in that direction. It's a very friendly small store and a restaurant. I said hello to my friend Jeanette, who works there, and she made a vanilla latte for me. I grabbed a Mary's Mountain cookie, too. Chocolate chip. They're amazing. I took it to a large table out there on the porch on the side of the building, and I sat there, as I have done countless times before, and looking at the mountains. Saying hello to folks as they walk up, I like to do that always looking for the next conversation with a stranger and often have one. It's, it's, it's great. So I heard this young lady talking and laughing, kind of a bit loud, walking up the wooden steps to the store. There was no one with her, though. She was talking to herself. She didn't look toward me at all, uh, but I said hi, and, but she didn't respond like she didn't hear me. She was small, maybe mid-twenties, about the same age as my daughter, probably. A few minutes later, she came out of the store with a sheriff's officer right behind her. I could clearly hear him talking to her. He was especially kind, telling her that he wanted her to be careful. As she walked away, going across the parking lot, she didn't go to a car, like I would have assumed, uh, given how far we are away from town, she walked out toward the highway. Well, I, I thanked the officer. I wanted to talk with him for a minute. and I thanked him for being so kind to her, and I asked him if he could tell me her name. And he said her name was Laura, and that's the first time he'd seen her around here. He said that she told him that she was trying to get to Minnesota. And we both kind of smiled and said, that's a long way from here. He said that he would try to keep an eye out for her, and he hoped that she wouldn't get hurt. I watched her from the porch for a couple of minutes as she walked slowly toward Highway 287. She was wearing sunglasses, and for a moment, I saw her stare up into the sun, just staring, and laughed, and continued to talk to herself. That was very, very strange. Highway 287 isn't especially busy, I mean, compared to maybe Dallas, but cars and trucks are doing at least 60 miles an hour around a fairly sharp corner there. That's right next to where she was walking back and forth on the shoulder. I got back on my bike and started south down the highway, and there she was, just walking inches from the side of the road, totally alone. Ironically, about an hour earlier, I ran an errand with my wife in her car. Just down the road from our house on Wilson Street here in Lublin, several cars had pulled off to the side of the road up in front of us. It was a loose dog running down the sidewalk right next to the road. Of course, we stopped too. My wife quickly grabbed a granola bar out of her purse and I jumped out of the car to try and catch the dog or at least lure him toward me. 
It's not a busy street, but I expected the dog to dash into the road. So I stepped into the road first, like the police officer that I'm not, and turned to a Jeep that was coming our direction. I gave him or her my best halt motion with my hand to make sure that the driver would slow down. Well, the granola bar didn't work at all. The dog was clearly scared and dashed right past me. I ran in its direction a little bit, but there was another person also trying to help and their car was a lot closer than mine, so I just let them continue on with the chase. There were several dog-loving people out there hoping that dog would be rescued and hoping that dog wouldn't get hurt. In the same way that so many of us love dogs and will do almost anything to help a stray who's in trouble, including standing in traffic, how is it that a young girl like Laura could also be out on the road, clearly in danger, and remain alone? I don't know what was wrong with Laura. Mental issues, I'm guessing. Schizophrenia, maybe, I don't know. But it just broke my heart to watch her. There was a day, I'm sure, when Laura was a little girl loved by her mom or dad or some caregiver. She probably went to elementary school all dressed up, maybe loved to sing, loved to read, had friends. We may never know why she and so many others with mental illnesses wind up in such dangerous situations. And honestly, it's just too hard to even speak about it anymore. I have been very intentional about not bringing a particular faith or talk of religion into this podcast. I have my beliefs and I never want to isolate any of my listeners. I care about you all equally. So I don't share much about my own faith. But I want to tell you, friends, I prayed for Laura from that porch as she walked away. I asked the God that I believe in to protect her, just like that stray dog, (laughs) that she wouldn't get hurt and that she too could be rescued. Yeah, I fully intended to talk about last Sunday and the pure joy of that day. And I will in a later episode. But the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride is more than just a rally of classic motorcycles and dressed up riders. The DGR raised funds for mental health issues and support for the suffering. The very same thing I think Laura is in need of right now. From the feedback I've gotten this past year about this podcast that I call Peace Love Moto, quite a few people have commented that the topics of peace and love are important in the world, independent of its association with motorcycles. I appreciate hearing that, and I believe that to be true. May I ask you today to have this stranger, Laura, in your thoughts and prayers There are lots and lots of Lauras out there. So many people suffering from mental illness, abuse, depression, poverty. We talk about it all the time, how very, very lucky we are to have motorcycles and the capabilities to own them and to ride them and the joy that we receive from riding motorcycles. We are so very fortunate. So maybe before your next ride, ask the heavens above, to watch out for and protect the innocent people, just like Laura. And also, ask that your eyes be wide open and your heart be open to help those in need as best you can. As always, thank you so much for listening. I wish you peace, and I wish you love. this
stop.